It's time to head into Group D. As Ailey already stated, Group C matches are done. 12 players are through to the round of 16. It's time to meet our next two competitors in Group D to find out who is going to round out and head in to Saturday. Our first competitor, you may know him by his streamer ID, the Asian Avenger from the United States. Let's welcome David Nguyen. Welcome, David. David is running both Esper Control and Esper Acuity, you bastard. Going against David, second place in the World Championship last year, the Polish player, Grzegorz Kowalski. Known as an excellent playtester, also bringing Esper Acuity, as well as Teamer Reclamation. Gentlemen, good luck, have fun, shake hands, glare at each other with anger and ferocity. Head to your stations and let's head to Ailey and Paul for the match commentary. Thank you very much, day nine. We, of course, have a sticky matchup here. All control matchups, all control decks arriving here. And we have Esper Control and Esper Acuity, which we haven't seen too much, at least not on our uh, blocks. So what is the difference exactly between the Esper Acuity deck and the Esper Control deck? So the main difference is that the primary source of card advantage in the Esper Acuity deck mm -hmm. comes from the card Dovin's Acuity, which is a three-man enchantment. When you play it, it enters a battlefield, it gains you two life and draws you a card. Now, actually, the, the deck that we see here on the screen is his Esper Control sure. deck, which it looks like, you know, your typical Esper Control deck. However, he does have a little bit of tech here. As you can see, two copies of Devious Cover-Up in the yeah. main deck. So, yeah, I, you know, I remember I actually used to play with uh, with the Asian Avenger at the local game store, and he was always the guy who played Control. So it's not <laughs> a surprise that he built and brought two Control decks to the table, and he also hates losing to other Control decks, as you can see by the two copies of Devious Cover-Up in the main deck to try to recycle through his deck. Taking a look at the sideboard here. Again, a one-off in the toolbox. Whatever he needs at any point in the game, if you can find Master's, Mastermind's Acquisition, you just go dig in, pick out whatever you need. Any surprises in this uh, sideboard? Uh, not particularly. You know, it's just a, a lot of the cards that we've already seen for the most part. I think the, the card that you haven't seen a lot of is Detection Tower. Mm -hmm. That's a card that you can search for with the Mastermind's Acquisition to help you against hexproof threats like Carnage Tyrant. All right, let's check out the Esper Acuity list. And now this is the deck that we haven't seen uh, in play nearly as much. I think many players have brought the Esper Control deck over the Esper Acuity deck. And as you can see, Esper uh, Dovin's Acuity is the primary source of card advantage for this deck. What you want to be doing is playing Esp uh, Dovin's Acuity, then playing an instance on your main phase mm -hmm. to be able to return Acuity, and then just get ahead on cards that way. Instead, it does not actually choose to play Teferi Hero of Dominaria, and instead opts to play cards like the Immortal Sun in the yeah. main deck. That way, if you do play against other Esper Control decks, you have the trump card there. Excellent. Taking a look at the sideboard now. Again, one offs in the sideboard just to help out uh, Asian Avenger with whatever he might need. And I imagine this sideboard is nearly identical to the previous one yeah. because he is playing the same colors. <laughs> and so whatever threats you think that you need, you probably are going to play the same types of cards in the sideboard. Yeah. Let's take a look at Kowalski's lists over here. Tamir Reclamation, rocking the Niv Mizzet. I love this card. It's so oh, yeah. rude. When he gets going, there's no stopping Niv Mizzet. Yeah, and we saw just the amount of damage that Niv Mizzet can do. Even if the opponent has a removal spell for it, you're still going to get your card back. Yep. And oftentimes, what you do is you play Niv Mizzet, set it up so you have something like an Opt or, or even a Shiv and Fire <laughs> to fire those off on the Niv Mizzet just to draw additional cards. And ultimately, all those cards are eventually going to add up, and you're just going to overwhelm your opponents in card advantage. And taking a look at the sideboard for this list. Another Niv Mizzet on the sideboard because, you know, who doesn't just want four Niv Mizzets? Banefire so, as well. So the reason why there is a sideboard for the Team of Reclamation deck, we've seen Dire Fleet Daredevil as a card that people mm -hmm. have played, but this deck plays four copies of Expansion Explosion. Yes. So if your opponent casts a Mastermind's Acquisition <laughs> and the Asian Avenger has it in both of his decks, yep. he can cast Expansion to copy <laughs> Mastermind's Acquisition and use his sideboard against the Asian Avenger. <laughs> It's going to be a great, great turn of events if that does happen. Taking a look at the Dovin's Acuity list. Sorry, Esper Acuity. 
Um, anything significantly different here from what we saw in Asian Avengers list? So as you can see, what, what this when I look at this main deck configuration, what it really tells me is that the Esper Acuity deck was designed specifically to beat aggressive mm -hmm. strategies. You're playing Dovin's Acuity, you have four copies of Revitalize, so lots of ways to gain life. You really want to be playing against creature decks, and that makes sense because there's a lot of creature decks represented in the field. However, I do believe that the Esper Acuity deck is likely a dog against the traditional Esper Control decks. That's why you see cards like Unmoored Ego in the yeah. main deck, which is a card you never want to draw against aggressive decks. And a card like the Immortal Sun, if you happen to draw that against the Esper decks, they have very, very few answers for the Immortal Sun. All right, taking a look at the sideboard as well. Much of the same that we've seen, but a bonus in Bolas's clutches making an appearance here. That's yeah. kind of cool. Yeah, he, it looks like Kowalski has opted for in Bolas' clutches over the more typical mass manipulation. Mm. You know, I, I'm more of a mass manipulation person <laughs> myself because you got to dream big when you're, oh, uh, yeah. when, you're when you're casting the, uh, the the thing. But but keep in mind, four blue, not the easiest to actually right. assemble. And most of the time, when you are playing the uh, the Mastermind's acquisition, oftentimes you're really only stealing one thing. All right, let's take a look at the tail of the tape here. Asian Avenger having started in 2001, 2006 for Kowalski. 16 Mythic Championships under his belt as well. Arena Games, 4,604. That's not too shabby. Not shabby at all. Lifetime Arena Games, 794 for Kowalski. And yeah. Uh, yeah, this should be a pretty, pretty good matchup between these four control lists. Right, and the Asian Avenger is a popular streamer. And don't let those numbers actually fool you because Kowalski is known to be one of the biggest grinders on the Mythic Championship Tour. Basically, you know, he's the type of person who will put in 60 to 80 hours of work every week for playtesting or just for fun because that's just how much he loves to play Magic. Taking a look at the opening hands here. It seems like we are on the acuity list for Kowalski. Not the best opening hand. And this seems to be the Esper control for the Asian Avenger. The, it, it looks like it's likely an Acuity Mirror because Opt is often not a card that you see in the Esper Control deck. So I think we're going to be seeing here an Esper Acuity Mirror, which I believe it might be the first time that we've seen that so far yeah. uh, during the course of this tournament. So what do you want to see before your opponent in this matchup, in this mirror? Like, what is your advantage? Well. Much like the Esper Control Mirror mm -hmm. that we've seen in the past, the important thing is, of course, trying to draw as many relevant spells as possible, yeah. meaning you really want to avoid drawing your removal spells because both decks play yeah. zero creatures. Another really important card in the matchup, of course, is Dovin's Acuity. Mm -hmm. Dovin's Acuity is the way that you can get ahead on cards, and you need to draw that and use the Acuity and chain that with other instants that you cast to continue drawing cards turn over turn. So it looks like both players have decided to mulligan Kowalski going down to five. Yeah, the going down to five. Is not great for him. Going down to five, but this is an excellent five. Yeah, this right. is this is a good hand. Turn two, Thoughty Rager. Yes, please, I'll take that. Because Dovin's Acuity is a nice way to draw cards, but mm -hmm. both decks play Mortify. Mortify is a good answer to Dovin's Acuity, but given that Kowalski has Thoughty Rager to clear the way oh, for yeah. the Acuity, he's going to be able to draw several cards off that card. Fantastic. So we will probably see the Mortify or the Immortal Sun. Considering the options here. Yeah, the Immortal Sun, a more powerful threat, but it will be a while before the Asian Avenger gets it into play. But it looks like he just does, he, you know, it's it's very likely that Kowalski has played this matchup a lot. Mm -hmm. And he identifies that the Immortal Sun is one of the most important cards in the matchup. Yeah. So deciding to take that instead. Drawing the Mastermind's acquisition off the top. Another powerful card in the control games. Fire's Wrath will not be doing much for Asian Avenger. Right, but now Kowalski is in a really awkward spot. After mm. the Asian Avenger top deck this Dovin's Acuity, yeah. now he has Dovin's Acuity to play this turn, but he knows that the Asian Avenger has Mortify. Yeah. And on top of that, because the Asian Avenger drew Acuity, he can go Mortify, return Acuity, and then continue to get ahead with the Dovin's Acuity that he just drew. So th things are getting kind of rough, and actually Kowalski choosing not to play the Acuity there because of the Mortify yeah. in the Asian Avenger's hand. So he'll probably want to try and find a second copy of Dovin's Acuity, just to have a backup when that Mortify gets rid of the first one. Yeah, keep in mind, the Asian Avenger cannot actually pick up that Dovin's Acuity because he has no targets for any of his removal. No, not yet. So Discovery surveilling two, taking a look at the top of the library, finding two lands. 
Yeah, and I think and he's going to want to keep both because yeah. oftentimes in the control mirror, the most important thing is making sure you hit your land drops, at least yeah. for the first six to seven turns of the game. So, you know, I think Kowalski's pretty happy with the lands there, and he does have some powerful spells already in hand in that Mastermind's acquisition along with the Mirari Conjecture. All right. Am I correct in saying he paid the two life there to... Uh, is he bluffing? Yeah, well, both decks play often one to two copies of Negate. Right. So he just wants to keep the two mana up ju ju just, to, just to show that he has it. Because life total, honestly, is not especially important in this matchup True. as the games do go on for a very long time. All right, so Mastermind's acquisition in play now. Going to the sideboard. Let's see what Kowalski decides to pick up. Lots of options here. And more to you go. Ooh, what's that going to hit? There's uh, there's several options. You mm -hmm. can go with Mastermind's Acquisition sure. and make it so that the Asian Avenger can't find any other ways to win. I, it's actually not clear to me how many other ways to win the Acuity deck plays in the main as they have multiple copies of Mastermind's Acquisition to go find, yeah, you know, find ways to kind condition. of seal out the game. So let's see what Kowalski decides to do here. No counter spells in the Asian Avenger's hand. Now, had this been the Acuity versus Esper Control matchup, Teferi here of Dominaria is often the card yeah. that you would be going after. So we'll see what Kowalski chooses to name here. Mastermind's acquisition would make a lot of sense here. And oh, you can look see Krim's the, face. He's <laughs> like, at, mm. He's like, mm, if you name this, I'm not sure I can win. Please, no touchy. Oh, he's touching. He's going to take all of those Mastermind's acquisition and send them into exile. <laughs> Sorry, Krim. <laughs> Let's look through the deck. Can he actually win? I don't think he actually has a way to win. I think his primary win condition now yeah. is drawing those devious cover-ups that he has and hoping to run Kowalski out of cards. All right, that will take a while, so let's see what the players decide to do here. Drawing the Modify, which can get rid of that Dovin's Acuity for Kowalski. Asian Avenger finding his opportunity while Kowalski's tapped out to Mortify that Dovin's Acuity. So no more card draw for you, thank you very much. Right, and now Kowalski's main game plan now, now that he's looked through the rest of the Asian Avengers deck, I think what he wants to be doing is setting up a situation where he can cast Unmoored Ego again with yeah. this Mirari Conjecture to get it back, and then name the Devious Cover-Up, making it so that the Asian Avenger would, will not be able to loop through his entire deck. All right. So Kowalski now considering Playing the Mirari Conjecture. Asian Avenger does have the Absorb up though. Kowalski deciding against it. Doman's Acuity hitting the board again for the Asian Avenger, drawing him a card, gaining him life. More land. I believe, I believe Kowalski will respond to the opt here with the Dovin trigger on the stack to try to mortify the Dovin's Acuity. The Absorb is up though. Does Krim want to save this? I believe so. I think he wants to try to get ahead on cards here. But maybe he's, he wants to save that Absorb so that he doesn't actually get Unmoored Ego. Egoed. <laughs> and Vraska's Contempt, actually a dead card in this matchup as neither player playing Planeswalkers, instead opting to go with Dovin's Acuity as mm -hmm. the way to get ahead on cards. Now, are there, are there deck types where you can play the Planeswalkers in Dovin's Acuity, or is it not very common? You can, but it gets to a point where you're then playing too many effects yeah. that um, kind of don't really affect the board necessarily, or it's a little bit too slow. On top of that, Teferi is not an instant. So True. with Dovin's Acuity, you do need a critical mass yeah. of instants that you can cast on your turn. And by playing Teferi, you're just, again, kind of removing some of the synergies that you get by playing the Dovin's Acuity. Point. So the Mara Conjecture did get absorbed there. No more recurring of the spells in the graveyard for Kowalski. However, keep in mind, Kowalski still has access to more Masterminds acquisitions in his deck. Oh, yes. So he can still use that to get something like a Mirari Conjecture to try to get back that Unmoored Ego. Again, also, mm -hmm. he has one copy of that in his main deck configuration as well, which you can use to try to name the Devious Cover-Ups in the Asian Avengers deck. Nice. Now, what the Asian Avenger, just kind of going into about uh, into detail about what the Devious Cover-Ups actually do, yeah. it's a four-mana counterspell. When you play it, you can shuffle up the four cards from your graveyard back into your library. If you happen to draw two copies of Devious Cover-Up, yeah. you can just keep shuffling each other back into the deck, making it so that you won't actually end up ever decking. Endless loop. Seems good. So it's kind of like what Teferi does when he tucks himself back into yep. the deck just with two cards. And the classic. We're in the classic Esper control <laughs> mirror where both players are holding 
five removal spells in hand that don't do anything, <laughs> and uh, we're gonna sit around here and wait to see when one of these players draws a relevant spell. So Thoi Rager's, you know, at least an option for Kowalski to take a peek in the hand and see exactly what the Asian Avenger is sitting on, and it's a whole bunch of nothing that does anything in this matchup. I love the patience of Kowalski, choosing not to fire off that Daughter Rager until he draws a relevant threat that he's going to try to resolve. So he he waited until he drew this Mirari Conjecture. Yes. Now he's going to cast Daughter Rager. The coast is clear. He's going to go for Mirari Conjecture, try to get that Unmoored Ego to try mm -hmm. to seal out the game. Kowalski counting his mana. Deciding not to play the Mirari Conjecture in that turn. Wow, and playing it extra careful here. The reason why he didn't fire it off that turn is there is still a slight chance that the Asian Avenger could have topped deck Mortify mm -hmm. to get that Mirari Conjecture off the board. So instead, waiting to play Mirari Conjecture on the following turn so that he has absorbed backup in case the Asian Avenger drew something this turn. Very well played there. So the Mirari Conjecture now bringing back Discovery Dispersal. Asian Avenger is digging through his library, trying to find something that will help him in the situation. I'm not sure there's much that will help him, barring those devious cover-ups you mentioned. Yeah, the Esprit Acuity leans very, very heavily on Mastermind's acquisition as a way to there's kind a of win the game. There's a devious cover-up. Kowalski does have the Absorb available to him. Now, Mode 2 returning a Sorcery. So what will Kowalski fetch here? with the Mirari Conjecture. What sorcery is he going to choose to return from his graveyard? I'm thinking we'll see, I don't know, maybe another Mastermind's Acquisition? Yeah, it's either going to be the Unmoored Ego or the Mastermind's Acquisition. Mm -hmm. I believe Kowalski already has an idea as to what he needs to do to win this matchup, and he he's correctly identified that Unmoored Ego on Devious Cover-Up should likely seal the deal. The Unmoored Ego will Possibly meet a counterspell, but, oh, but he's they waiting. Will have the absorb. Oh, and look at just this. In case. He's waiting for Murari Conjecture to go to Chapter Three because mm -hmm. once Chapter Three resolves, every spell you play is duplicated. So Excellent. this is not one unmoored ego that oh, goes on the stack. This, this is, is two. two. So what's the other thing he's going to find? Gonna go, hey, Krim, what else you got there? I'm going to take it. Well, Krim is first going to go. I'm going to play this devious cover up and hope <laughs> it resolves. But if it doesn't. The game is likely going to be over very soon. Now, what happens when Absorb is played? Can it counter two spells? Um, well, it, it, will, it will copy, and yeah. you, can ca you can counter the same spell twice. Oh, okay. <laughs> but you're only going to gain the life once, because okay. once the one of the Absorbs resolves, the other one will fizzle. Okay. It's interesting. So the Absorb. There we go, Getting double Absorb. Get rid of the Divas cover-up. Absorb targeting it twice. And Asian Avenger knows it's pretty much done and dusted at that point. No more outs for him in that matchup. So game one goes to Kowalski. Yeah, what a strange matchup, you know? It's like a weird one. The primary win condition being I'm going to deck you and exile all the relevant threats in your deck. And the deck doesn't really have a whole lot of relevant threats. It actually relies very heavily on its sideboard yeah. to try to win the matches. Oh, very well played there by Kowalski. Knew exactly what he had to go after. And the one thing I quite like about the Unmoored Ego as well is instead of just Firing off, yes, I'm going to take all of your Teferis. It lets you take a look through your opponent's deck. Obviously, in this situation, the players know what each other's decks are comprised of. But in any other situation, if you're playing on Arena, you don't know what your player, you don't know what your opponents have. So you just right. get to take a look before right. you choose all four. I will say, however, that the main deck inclusion of Unmoored Ego is truly a concession to the fact that they feel that you know some of the slower control decks mm -hmm. in the format are pretty poor matchups. And as a yeah. result, they're like, you know what? I'm just going to play a couple of one ups in my deck because if I do happen to draw it and resolve it, it does give me that one chance to actually be able to be beat, you know, mm -hmm. Teferis or a deck with a bunch of Wilderness Reclamation. Yeah. So we have seen a few times when where players in this tournament have brought their one ofs like the Excellence Binding, for example, right. or playing the Unmoored Egos. It's, I think it's cool to see like just this, this, this one card that might come in handy. If you right. find it, great. If you don't find it, it's not the end of the world. So. And you're also going to see that a lot more in decks that are able to kind of filter through its deck. Mm -hmm. Decks with more card draw, more yeah. deck, more card selection, cards like Opt, Discovery Dispersal. Mm -hmm. That allows you to find those kind of one of fun ofs in your deck yeah. to try to find answers to specific cards and specific matchups. Now, going into this next match, we have the Asian Avenger on Esper Control. Yep. He is forced to play Esper Control, but Kowalski with kind of, I think, the deck 
that beats only really one other deck, but it's yeah. really good at beating that deck, and that's the <laughs> Teamer Reclamation deck. We already saw this deck go to work in the hands of Gabriel Nassif against John Rolf, playing Esper Control. And, you know, one of the biggest advantages is playing the Teamer Reclamation. Not only, you know, I talked about how being ahead in mana is really important yeah. in control matchups, but on top of that, the deck just plays more card draw, right? It's playing the oh, full yeah. four copies of Chemistry's Insight, four copies of Expansion Explosion, and ways to ramp out its mana with cards like Growth Spiral. Yeah. And uh, it just plays also a lot less removal than the Esper Control decks. The Esper Control decks are playing you know, Mortifies, Moment of Cravings, Cry of the Carnarium, Kai's Wrath. The Esper, sorry, the Team of Reclamation decks are playing four Shivan Fires and two Cannonades. That's basically <laughs> it. So far less dead cards in the matchup, yeah. which gives that deck a huge edge in the matchup. And if we do go to a game three, I think it's a pretty simple Team of Reclamation for Kowalski. All right, take a look at the opening hands here. We have three lands, Thought Erasure, perfect. Two Absorbs and Vraska's Contempt. Looks pretty good. A mulligan on Kowalski's side, not happy with the opening hand. They're finding a Steam Vents, a Hinterland Harbor. This is a pretty slow hand as well, but deciding to keep it, sending the second expansion explosion to the back of the library. And this might actually be a little bit of an interesting game. So keep in mind, by the way, Kowalski mulligan the five yep. game ones, but still managed <laughs> yeah. to come out ahead. But here, Kowalski effectively mulliganing to four as he's got a couple of Shivan Fires in hand that have absolutely no targets in this matchup. Exactly. Oh, but look at this. <laughs> oh, you want to take a peek? So do I. What you yeah. got there, bud? Taking a quick look in the hand of the Asian Avenger. And getting rid of something here. What do we go for? The other Thought Erasure, perhaps? I could also see Absorb being the other option. Of course, mm. he's definitely not going to be taking Vraska's Contempt. Not a, lot of, mm -mm. not a lot of targets in his deck outside of the Niv-Mizzet. So I imagine he's going to either take Absorb here or the Thought yeah. Erasure. It's exactly that. Wilderness Reclamation on the top of the library for Kowalski. And Kowalski opting to keep Wilderness Reclamation on top despite not having the mana to cast it, realizing that this matchup likely goes long and it's mm -hmm. important to draw. Well, finding draw there. And not put them in the graveyard. Finding draw there in the opt, perhaps a land on top. Another opt though. Sure, why not? I'll just opt again. Thank you very much. Land. This is probably what's going through his mind right now. Hey, land. There we go. He's good. See? <laughs> Definitely keeping that on top here. Now he's got that Wilderness Reclamation. However, he does know that the Asian Avenger has a Mortify in hand, so he's probably mm -hmm. not going to just run it out yet and probably look to fire off the Chemister's Insight that's in his graveyard, discarding one of those uh, fires, relatively yeah. ineffective Shivan <laughs> Fires. Now, what is the benefit of running a Shivan Fire over a shop, for example? I know there is the, uh, the extra... Um, damage it can deal, but it's got no reach, as we've talk as we spoken right. about before. So reach is the type of effect that you want in a more aggressive deck. Yeah. A deck that's actively looking to kill your opponents by rushing you down. Right. In a control deck such as this, Shiv and Fire just provides you a little more flexibility because it gives you the option, at some point, to kill bigger creatures. Mm -hmm. Not only that, you know, this deck is playing Wilderness Reclamation. You actually have the ability. Kicking Shiv and Fire is a very common thing to do in this deck because of the amount of sheer mana that this deck can generate. All right. Kowalski now has a consideration here between Search for Canta or the Wilderness Reclamation. What are you least sad to see mortified or countered in this instance? And Kowalski also has drawn a Search for Escanta, so it's possible he might just look to run out both. But then that's going to sequence pretty poorly with how the Asian Avenger can respond to this, mm. because what he can do is use Absorb on Search for Escanta, follow that up by untapping and casting Mortify yeah. on the Wilderness Reclamation. But that's what Kowalski has decided to do. Both enchantments will hit the board. Well, this one will not. Asian Search Avenger absolutely is... cannot resolve. No, no, no. Asian Avenger gets rid of that swiftly. He doesn't know what the other card in Kowalski's hand is. Yeah, though. so he might cast the Thought Erasure here just to make, yeah. make sure to clear the way. He knows there's one Shivan Fire, but he doesn't know about the other one. It's another Shivan Fire in the bin. And now a Mortify to clear the way for the Reclamation. But again, I mean, Kowalski mulligan the bunch, but he's got more lands in the battlefield, and both both players just have a handful of nothing. You know, <laughs> Raskus <laughs> them cast down, Cry of the Carnarium, Shivenfire, not going to be doing a whole lot here. So it's kind of a race to see who draws maybe the first Chemister's Insight, yep. the first Teferi, the first Threat. Sulphur Falls, still not much going on for Kowalski. He needs to find something else 
Because at the moment, he's just sitting there dropping land. Search for his Canton now for Asian Avenger. That's This could be pretty big. Yeah, six bi cards in that graveyard? Big draw, and very curious how many cards are actually. Is it Was it six cards I think in the it graveyard? was six. He if hopped over six, quickly there. Right. If it's six cards, he will be able to flip the Search for his Canton, which is huge because Kowalski, you know, we talked about how that deck has a lot of card draw, but he needs to find one. Yeah. So placing a stop on the Asian Avengers. First main phase? Okay, so chose not to flip search for Ascanta. Body Rager taking a peek again, seeing the land and the pretty pointless Shivan Fire in this matchup. And by the way, this is the upside. Kowalski actually drew a Ooh. stomping ground to play mm -hmm. and chose not to play it for a turn. And this prompted Asian Avenger. He was like, what can that last card be? I have to know. I know it's probably nothing, but I have <laughs> to know. So fired it off only to find another Shiv and Fire in Kowalski's hand. But you, this you is an excellent curious. draw here. Yeah, this is excellent. Expansion Explosion. This is going to be an upkeep Expansion Explosion here. This way, if Asian Avenger did have a counter, mm -hmm. he would have to use it on his turn, tapping himself out. He's going to target the Asian Avenger, try to do five damage to him, and draw five cards Ooh, here. Wee. All of a sudden, card advantage. Senor Kowalski. Flipping a search for his Canton now. Asian Avenger is able to dig through his library to find the relevant cards, hopefully finding some chemists inside to get rid of these creature removal spells. Yeah, and now both players are, you know, going to find no shortage of action here as the Asian Avenger has now flipped Search for Ascanta. Ascanta the Sunken Ruin on the battlefield, allowing the Asian Avenger to dig every single turn for relevant answers to Kowalski. However, also on Kowalski's side of the battlefield, Chemister's Insight in hand, allowing him to draw up to four more cards this turn gonna do that straight away. We may also see a growth spiral just to get that steam vents on the battlefield as well. Let's see. What do we find? Another chemisters? Excellent. Yeah, Excellent. that's the nice thing about chemisters inside. They're really good at finding other chemisters inside. Yeah. And at that point it just keeps they just chain on top of each other. <laughs> so Asian Avenger looking for some counter magic here. Mortify also a relevant card to draw to deal with a wilderness reclamation. Picking in the gate from the options. And on the main phase, will we see a Chemist's Insight? No, we'll see a Growth Spiral instead. Yeah, Growth Spiral into Growth Spiral means that he could maybe put additional lands into play, but that's not what's going to happen. Entering tap, because it will untap on the upkeep. The other Chemist's Insight. Krim did have the option to negate, choosing not to. Yeah, Krim is likely going to try to hold on to that negate for something more relevant. I'm going to go with Expansion Explosion. <laughs> that's probably yeah. the big one that he's trying to hold this negate for. Okay, Gross search for spiral. Ascanta as well. Yep. Search is for Ascanta. There is a Mortify in Krim's hand, though. So he can deal with that. Right. Still that Vraska's Contempt, the cost down, the cry of the Carnarium. Those are just burning a hole in Krim's hand. And Kowalski does have a couple of permission spells in hand as well, in Sinister Sabotage and the Syncopate. He might choose to fight over this. Mm -hmm. Or he might not, given that he does have those two Chemisters Insights in Graveyard. So let's see, it's all a matter of what helps me win this matchup. Let's see the Asian Avenger firing off the Mortify. Will Kowalski fight over the search? He does know that the Asian Avenger has Negate in hand, mm -hmm. so if he does fire off the Sabotage, it is pretty likely that the Asian Avenger will use the Negate this turn. However, if the Asian Avenger uses Negate this turn, mm -hmm. he will not be able to activate Ascanta the Sunken Ruin. I think, so. that, I think that is what he's considering right now. But at the same time, if he doesn't find an answer for Search for Ascanta, he's also going to be in trouble. Ooh, Ooh. that's what you want to see. That one's probably going on top of the library. Yeah, or the just prob hazard just a guess there. Yeah, yeah seems my, good. My professional opinion. <laughs> so. Expansion Explosion, of course, being one of the main win conditions for Kowalski alongside Niv-Mizzet, who we haven't seen yet. Where is he hiding out? Is he showing up fashionably late? Did he whiff? Uh, did he whiff? It looks like he missed on uh, on the Ascanta activation there. Did not find anything oh. off of it. That's a feels bad. And now we see a main phase activation of Ascanta the Sunken Ruin as the Asian, Asian Avenger needs to find a Mortify here to deal with Search for Ascanta. Otherwise, it's going to flip. And Kowalski has such a tremendous mana advantage here as well, along with the two Chemistry's Insights in the graveyard. And he's just going to continue to pull further and further ahead. Asian Avenger finding Kaya Orzov Usurper. Ooh, that, 
Same that's actually pretty here. awesome with two chemistry's insights in the graveyard. Yeah, the that's... Asian Avenger will be able to eat at least one of the chemistry's insights. Well, that's pretty good for him. Kowalski now considering... Does he have enough mana up for Syncopate? I don't believe he does. No. Or, no, possibly. No. I face All right. Undead <laughs> this is child's play. So let's see what we go after here. Kaya going after the Chemist's Insight. So Kowalski opting not to syncopate there to... Right. Well, this is going to be... This is going to start the Chemist's This is going to be a really big turn for Kowalski here yeah. because he knows that the Asian Avenger only has two mana up mm -hmm. and negate. So what he can actually choose to do here is go for a very big expansion explosion. It might not necessarily be lethal, but yeah. still keep up syncopate for one mm -hmm. to be able to counter the negate in the Asian Avenger's hand. That would be really, really cool. As Kanta now flipping, giving Kowalski another way to look through his library and find exactly what he needs. So let's see, how much mana do we have on the board here? 4, 6, 9, 12, 14. With the Hinterland Harbor, that's 15 mana. So he can explosion for, you know, Eleven? 7, 8, 9. Yep. I mean, he can also set up a situation where he can go for a mini, ex a smaller explosion mm -hmm. so that he has access to both Syncopate for 1 and Sinister Sabotage on the following turn for whatever the Asian Avenger might top deck, something like a Teferi, yep. Body Razor, cards of that nature. So Kowalski now considering his play. But if he's going to go for an explosion, he wants to do it on the main phase because this is the window. This is the opportunity where he can only he, he only needs to play around that one negate yeah. in the Asian Avengers hand. Because if he goes for this play on the Asian Avengers turn, who knows what he has? He could have absorb, syncopate, and negate in his hand to fight through this. So this is the window. All right. So the explosion is being cast for how much? What is X equal to? So X looks like it's equal to six, which does give him access to five mana untapped. I love this. He now has access to Syncopate for one and Sinister Sabotage next turn. Perfect. So here we should see the Syncopate for one. Negate, getting exiled. Drawing a bunch of cards and dealing damage, getting rid of Kaya. Oh, look at this. Ooh. All of the cards. Look. Two Wilderness Reclamations, and there's old Niv Mizzet. You want to come party? Come on, let's play. Yeah, and this game is very close to entering its conclusion here. Kowalski has all the mana in the world, all the card draw spells, Niv Mizzet, protection for Niv Mizzet in multiple angles with Negate and Sinister Sabotage. So Niv Mizzet, of course, can't be countered. He can be Vraskid, but we do have Sinister Sabotage and Negate available to protect him if that's the route. Right. that Kowalski decides to go. And Kowalski doesn't even need to necessarily go for Niv Mizzet here because mm -hmm. what he can just try to do is just continue getting ahead on cards with Wilderness Reclamation. Mm -hmm. There's a nice interaction between Ascanta, the Sunken Ruin, yeah. and Wilderness Reclamation. What Kowalski can do is, with the Wilderness Reclamation trigger on the stack, he can activate Ascanta, the Sunken Ruin, get a card, then untap all your lands, kind of like the Teferi interaction that we've seen before, but basically kind of on steroids. It's <laughs> you know, it, 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 because you get so much more mana here. Oh, yeah. Do we see double Wilderness Reclamations? Yes, we do. Of Why not? We do. Why not? Why not? We're going to do it. Do it well. Yeah. All right. I'm looking forward to this end step. This is going to be wonderful. And this is precisely why you bring this type of deck to the tournament. You know, I will say that this deck probably has the most polarizing matchups yeah. in the field. It is extremely difficult to beat an aggressive deck with this Wilderness Reclamation deck. But if the matchups break in your favor mm -hmm. and you have it paired against an Esper Control deck, you are extremely happy to be playing that matchup. So Kowalski very close here to a 2-0. Let's see if he can close out this game with double Wilderness Reclamation on the board. Setting that end step stop here. Keeping it tight here, playing that Growth Spiral too because <laughs> that does give you additional mana. Also untapped. Don't think he needs that mana untapped, but hey, why not? Why not? There's no direct damage in the Esper Control deck, so... If not, why not? Maximizing all the mana. Three mana floating. Here's another activation from Ascan to the Sunken Ruin. Let's take a look, see, and see what's on the top of our library. Gift of Paradise. Eh, not, the, not exactly what you want to see. <laughs> he just, he just declined. Yeah. He just like, chose not to take a card. Like, Meh, I'm good. <laughs> Wait, is that his library? Uh, I think there's only five cards oh. left in his library. Okay. Well. Better get a move on then, sir. 
Right, but keep, <laughs> keep in mind the deck does play the full four copies of Expansion Explosion, and I don't think we've gone through all of them. I think we've gone through three of them. Yeah, one he is used... right at the back of his library. Right, right, right. Because he used one early, very early to in the copy. game, to copy a Thought Erasure, and then he's cast two more. Yeah. And right. also, remember, he can also just win with the Nizzit. Potentially. Well, actually, he might deck. Still, I think he's still 13 cards in the deck, though. So he's all right. He's all right for all right. a while. Look at that. He's yeah. had 12 mana in his mana pool. <laughs> 12 mana. And whoof, he's like, I don't even need goes. this mana. I don't even need to use the mana. I'll it's just, just wait. Like, I'll just wait. Throwing, like, throwing them around like dollar bills. All right. Thought Erasure taking a peek in the hand. And I'm pretty sure... Asian Avenger doesn't like what he sees. <laughs> just, he's just like, gonna your choice. A guess your choice. Like, Look at the Asian Avenger. He's like, gee, you know what? He's just got to be jealous because he's always just been the control player, <laughs> and his opponent has all blue cards in hand. He's just, you can look, look at that. Yeah, look he's at just that. like, what am I supposed he, he to do He came up to here? me earlier, and he's like, Paul, thank you for Teferi. I was like, well, I wasn't really involved, but sure. And he's like, even when my opponent plays Teferi, I'm like. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> so this is a man who just appreciates blue cards. Oh, and yeah. seeing this hand, he's like, all right. You know oh, I mean, yeah. you do what you got to do, man. But uh... Certainly a lover of control, <laughs> the Asian Avenger. And he is just, he's having a good cackle at this because it, it's pretty <laughs> ludicrous. The amount of power that is in Kowalski's hand. And Kowalski cools a cucumber. He's just oh, yeah. like, yep, this is my hand. Yeah, keep in mind, my hand I mean, is the, amazing. the stakes are extremely high here, oh, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. The winner of this match will secure a spot into the top 16. Now, the loser. Still has a chance. Yep. They will be picking up their first loss here. Taking a peek again into the library. Wilderness Reclamation again, because why not? All right, how big do we <laughs> want this expansion explosion to be? Mm -hmm. 50? How big can it get? What's the biggest one we saw? 30. I think we saw one for 30. Yeah. So let's see if we can break that. All right. Come on, Kowalski. You can do it for us, bud. Let's go. Do it for the viewers. Do it yes. for the fans. There it is. Oh, expansion let me, explosion. Here we go. We got, we got multiple right. ways to protect this. We got that Wilderness Reclamation. Let's we have see. Three wilderness reclamation. Let's see an explosion for 50 damage. All right. Krim, do not concede. Let him have this. Come on. <laughs> Be a dude. You got it. <laughs> Set that stop. Yeah. Look at Kowalski. No smiles until he actually wins the game here. All right. I'm excited, friends. I am excited. We are going to see the most ginormous expansion or explosion you have ever seen. Brace yourselves for majesty. Yeah, I imagine he's going to cast expansion explosion and keep up three mana for this and 11 mana 11 just mana? in case well he's got three sabotages well, and the gate so you know yeah. just in case but that's no fun right. go on risk it for the biscuit you can do it <laughs> of course the player will not do that in this situation that's just me going yeah sure yeah. why not because that's what I, I i like to do that go big or it's go it's something home. i'd definitely be doing if i was streaming oh yeah 100 <laughs> percent all right, tappy, tappy, tappy. That is how much? 20, no, I can't math. It's 30 mana. Ooh. And so let's see, 3, 6, 9, 12, 6, 17 mana. Oh so my goodness. So then it'll be <laughs> 47 <laughs> plus another 17, so 64 mana. Oh he's my got goodness. Six, he's going to have 64 <laughs> mana here. <laughs> this is wonderful. Tap, 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 tap. tap All right, tap, one tappy, more tappy, trigger tappy, of the Wilderness Reclamation here. Tap, tap, tappy, tap. Just Let's see. <laughs> Krim is, Krim. He's canning himself. He knows. He's like, yeah, come He's on. like, all right. Go on. Hit me with your best shot. I bet shot. Kowalski's going to, like, go do an explosion for, like, 16 or I something. I will say like I'm 20. so glad that they put the plus five there. Because oh, here we go. 33. 33. Yeah, it, has, it has to be bigger than the seats, yeah, right? Yeah. So you have to go for oh, yeah. go. over lethal here. And with one. <laughs> <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Wait. Let me go to the bathroom no. real quick. <laughs> oh, we didn't get to see 33 damage to the face. Dang nabbit. Good games. 2-0 for Gregor Kowalski and Krim being an absolute great sport there. Letting him tap, tap, tap through all of his mana. And, uh, Everybody wanted to see it after Oh, yeah, all, I wanted right? to see it after. Come on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give him a hard time for that off. you got to let the deck do its thing, you yeah. know? And that was the thing. Yeah. yeah. It's almost as fun as when Niv Miz is on the board and you're drawing all these cards and you're just like, <laughs> happily yep. pinging away at whatever you want. Exactly. Fantastic. But, I mean, you really got to see the true reason to bring something like Team of Reclamation here. It's, it's really to feast on all of the Esper Control decks because oh, yeah. you just play more card draw, more counter magic, yep. and all, and you just are also able to blink all the removal spells that the Esper Control decks play. Yeah. So that was an excellent game. Two games, actually, that we got to see between the Asian Avenger and Gregor Kowalski. He, of course, advances to the top 16, but the Asian Avenger is not out of it yet, folks. Fighting for his life.
But let's throw it over to Becca now, who has Kowalski for an interview.